Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Alex here. In today's video we are talking again about the Josh Cahill situation, about what happened um, some time ago in that flight review where Josh Cahill got banned by Qatar Airways. My previous video was quite um, short and I just summarized the situation basically. I just want to share with you guys the biggest uh, drawback about that whole situation and actually the, the saddest part about what happened. So, you know, Josh Cahill made that video about Qatar Airways and then he got banned. It was a harsh review and he just outlined many of the issues that he thought Qatar Airways has and then uh, he just, uh, you know, published that video. So the biggest problem with that video is that after the video was published, Qatar Airways crew on that particular flight have been fired. I don't know how many of them. I don't know um, who exactly was sacked, but uh, quite a few of them, I, th I believe they were fired. At least that was explained on a later date. They, they lost their jobs because of that negative review. Some of the things underlined was the fact that they had their back turned towards the guest while boarding or the lavatories were not clean enough, they were quite messy, or they were not so uh, well-rounded in customer service, not smiling enough, and things of that nature. Um, and uh, it's unfortunate because that led to the loss of jobs of those cabin crew, and uh, that's really the saddest part. You know, somebody makes a review of that flight, and then you lose your job as a crew. That's terrible, actually. That's terrible. And maybe it was not the fault of the cabin crew on that particular flight. In a bit of a defense towards the cabin crew, I would say this. Sometimes the cabin crew are busy with work-related tasks on board. During boarding especially, we might be stressed in the galley. Galley is there, the boarding is there, and you still have to do some tasks in the galley, like preparing welcome drinks for business class passengers in that same galley that you're boarding. On. So that's quite challenging and many times you're running up and down as a cabin crew and you might face the passengers with your back sometimes because you're walking along. So that might be one of the issues on that particular flight. The cabin crew was facing the guests with their back on them because they were working or they were doing something at that very point. That can happen many times. Um, and it's not good. I am, I'm not saying it's, it's a good thing. You should always face the guests right, in customer service with your face towards the guest, right? But sometimes at that very second, it might not be uh, possible. Another thing to talk about, you know, smiling every time. Sometimes, even for me as a cabin crew, it's, it's quite hard to smile at every single moment throughout the flight. Sometimes, you know, maybe uh, I have thoughts in my mind or something and, you know, I'm, I cannot smile nonstop. I would look like an imbecile as well. If you're greeting someone, if you talk with someone, um, if you have a conversation about something, if you have an issue on board, smiling always helps and breaks that barrier, right, between you and that uh, guest that, as that uh, passenger. So smiling is great. You have to smile on board. And I think it comes naturally for most people or for some people. And then for other people, they have to kind of force themselves to smile. That may be the case on that particular flight um, a review, right? Maybe the crew, they had a bad day or maybe it's not within them to smile at that very moment. And that uh, can happen, right? So... For me personally, I generally smile when interacting with people, especially on my job, because I just got used to it. And it, it's also, I think it's part of me, right? So smile on always. One other thing on that flight might be the lavatories being dirty. Now, uh, it, this is a br very broad subject in the cabin crew world and all the flight uh, cabin crew community. We talk about it often and it's just, um, it really depends. I will tell you this, I will not dig into it too much, but some flight routes are super, have super clean lavatories. As a cabin crew, you go check them, you go do your checks and you find nothing. You maybe find the lack of toilet paper, but there's no water on the floor. There's no mess. There's the, the bassinet, right? The, um, the sink area is cleaned at all times. The passengers, they clean them themselves after using it. So very super civilized passengers and so on and so forth. Um, but that really depends. For example, on my flight to Japan, to Osaka uh, this month, I had uh, 
exactly that. There was no mess in the lavatories. As a cabin crew, for me, it's super satisfying not to have to clean up that lavatory so often. So it makes my job easier and, um, you know, I really appreciate it. But however, some flight routes are different. If you go to some flight routes, uh, the lavatories will always be messy because some people they see that public space as you know just a public space they don't really care about it they don't give a s about it right they don't care so they will leave it dirty they will leave water on the floor they will leave the uh the sink area dirty they will use all the napkins all the tissues all the everything so they don't really care right they don't care about how that lavatory looks like how that toilet looks like after using it in a public space but uh so as a cabin crew, you should keep those lavatories as tidy, as neat as possible. But during the service times, you're super busy, you're serving food. You cannot physically check at the same time those lavatories. So they might be messy. They might really be messy at times during that flight. Especially if the uh, guest in, uh, in the question, they don't really care about that public uh, space, right? So they will get messy. This is the situation. This is the reality. The lavatories can get messy, even though as a cabin crew, you want to try to uh, clean them as much as possible, as often as possible. If you are doing the service and everybody's doing the service and you have a lot of call bells and you, you know, tea, coffee, fish, chicken in economy, especially it's like craziness. Uh, during that service, it's a busy time, it's really tough to clean the toilets. Maybe that was the case on this Josh Cahill flight um, where those uh, cabin crews, they were not up to standard, let's say, with performing those types of duties. So yeah, what can I say guys, life as a cabin crew sometimes is not easy and we can learn a few things from this type of a situation. Uh, but who is to blame here? Well, obviously, Qatar Airways is quite strict when it comes to the cabin crew community. Recently, we saw a lot of positive changes for the crew community. They got less restrictions, the cut of that uh, curfew that I talked about in my previous videos. Uh, that's a very positive change, but they're still a bit strict, right? If they see a review online and they see the cabin crew being, being blamed uh, for lack of proper service you know, bad things might happen, the crew might go away, right? Unfortunately, this is the way it is. This is the way it is, and you have to realize that. Because it shows that's a bad customer service, right, towards the guest. And it's so unfortunate, because I'm sure those cabin crew, they're great people, and they did a great job, probably. But, you know, that flight review was the way it was. So then, is Josh Cahill to blame on the situation? Impartially, Kind of yes, <laughs> impartially kind of yes, because that review led to the dismissal of those cabin crew. And that's the saddest part of this whole uh, scenario, this whole situation, right? I mean, there's those are normal, nice people losing their jobs. It's quite harsh. You don't know their personal life. Maybe they have some debts that they have to take care of. Maybe they have somebody home that's sick, they're sending money to. Maybe they really need that job, you know? Maybe they don't have um, a place to go after losing that job. So that's really painful. That's really painful. And personally, I'm not blaming anybody. I personally, I, I just think it's a sad situation and there's not a very good solution to it, especially considering the fact that once you get fired, I mean, you're probably going to move back home you're probably gonna want to find something else and you're probably just a bit you know um sad upset about it upset about the company upset about that review or that situation or whatever so are the flight reviews a good thing for the cabin crew community i don't know i i think it really depends if you have a flight review and uh, you highlighted a lot of negative things about that situation, cabin crew might suffer. So we all can learn from this situation, even uh, Josh Cahill can learn from this situation. Nevertheless, as I said before, yeah, he's an entertaining YouTuber. He does those flight reviews as a living. And, you know, I respect that myself. I can appreciate that as a, as a cabin crew as well. I, I do have social media personnel and flight reviewers on my flights sometimes, I guess. And I'm always doing my job and I never had any issues, but uh, 
maybe I was lucky. So, yeah, you never know. You never know. What do you guys think about the situation? There's many, many comments I got on my recent video about this. Maybe I'll read some of them to you. Yeah, that's the saddest part. It makes me think of the COVID period when so many uh, people lost their jobs. And of course, so many cabin crews, so many pilots lost their jobs, so many people working in the aircrafts and the airline industry lost their jobs 2020, even up to 2021. And everybody was depressed, everybody was scared, including me, including me. Um, and I don't really know airlines that they held to the cabin crew positions. Um, having an excess workforce kind of obliges you as an airline to uh, dismiss people and to fire people because you know at the end of the day you need to make some sort of profits you need to make some sort of a money and that was the thing back then but we moved past that and now things like this can happen so yeah also the fact that Josh Cahill was banned by Qatar Airways that's also pretty sad and that's also you know not fair or you know it's quite bad but people losing their jobs that hurts the most would you agree with me what do you think Anyways, uh, let's read some comments uh, on my YouTube channel about this situation from previous, uh, from my previous video. For example, I can read this one. I think both Qatar and Cahill is at fault here. Uh, Cahill indirectly tries to establish that his aggressive opinionated criticism is facts. Now, it's the thing with that is it's his experience. That's the thing. It's also his experience and viewing the world and viewing the flight through his experience. So you have to take that in consideration. But uh, nevertheless, it seems like he shows the bad side more than the good. Come on, man, nobody's perfect and not every airplane in a certain airline is new. So in that review, of course, uh, he presented that older Airbus A330, which was not up to standard when it comes to the Qatar Airways fleet. And um, even in that, he had, we have some older planes. We have the 777s. They're still sturdy. They're like a workforce of a plane. But uh, yeah, they're a bit older. Older cabins, obviously. And it's hard to really have that as an airline. You cannot be perfect have the recent the most recent aircraft everywhere and uh, some of the planes can be old and that's the way it is you know your next flight your next sector you might have the newer plane you might have the 380 you might have the 787 but maybe on your recent flight you you had a 767 on a airbus a320 since 15 years ago or something so yeah, a lot of comments here. Um, um, Alexander, I'm one of the many viewers that watch and enjoy flight reviews by Mr. Cahill and also other reviewers. I can see and appreciate um, what they do for an aviation geek. You know, I love planes. Um, with the case of Qatar ban on Mr. Cahill, it's just unjust, it's unfair, it's childish. Okay, yeah, so obviously there's many, many opinions expressed on my comment section about this situation. And, um, you know, you guys have to understand this as well about an airline and a company and about a country after all, right? Because many of those Gulf Airlines, they're owned by um, the country partially um, it's a different country it's a different rule they have different rules and whenever you go traveling to that country and you go visit that country you have to respect the rules in that country that's common courtesy and I think that's a very good thing you know uh, not every country is like uh, a UK or US there are certain countries they have their own opinions about life about uh, how people should conduct their life and um, and things can be slightly different. Now, I'm living in UAE for seven plus years and I love it here. I think it's one of the best places on the planet. But some people might not agree with me. Some people might say, oh, the West, uh, Western Europe is better or US is better, whatever. I think I, I love it here so far, personally. It's very safe. I love the weather, the lifestyle. There's, there's certain things, right? But obviously, government things are different. So you have to take that into consideration when talking about subjects like this as well. Or making flight reviews. <laughs> All right, I will read one more comment. Um, 
you won't like me disagreeing with you and you probably remove my comment, but I would ban him too. The less video reviewers and people on board only for the rides, the better. Imagine the entire plane filled with YouTubers one day. Uh, these reviewers can be dangerous to companies' reputation and getting out of hand. Okay, I can see that, you know, I'm a cabin crew, I work on those planes, so I can understand that. Um, but again, you have to understand the world we're living in. It's different nowadays than it was 10 years ago. It's a different world nowadays that we're living in. So nowadays, people are filming stuff. You know, you have people doing TikToks and Instagrams everywhere they go. Uh, I am myself a social media creator or whatever I am. So I'm doing this as well. Um, everybody's doing a bit of something, content creation. Even you post a story on Instagram, that's still kind of a content creation. You post a story on your flight. That's, you know, reflects something about that flight. So I kind of agree with that. You might have issues if everybody on that flight is a social media person. <laughs> Definitely. That's not ideal, man. Imagine a plane filled with YouTubers. But uh, content creators, they're everywhere. And even people that they don't consider themselves, people that they don't consider themselves content creators, they're um, indirectly doing so. They are creating content, so... That's it. That's my two cents on the subject. I don't think I will touch this subject anymore. Anyway, probably Josh Cahill will get unbanned at a certain point. Um, he does a lot of videos on his channel anyway. His recent video is about getting into a fight with a passenger, I believe. <laughs> I haven't watched that video, but by the title and the thumbnail, it seems wildly entertaining. Ladies and gents, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, what do you think about this situation? More videos coming. Etihad Airways roster reveal coming soon. As always, have a nice one. And of course, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody.